we no longer became this nation of immigrants, I don't know who we would be then. I think we would just lose our identity as Americans. You and I from the same cloth we share the same blood I decided to come to America because I believe America is a land of equality is a land of freedom is a land of opportunity you know and um, I believed in it my name is Okay Namusu I'm 31 years. I'm from West Africa, Nigeria. Where do you live now? I live in Newark, New Jersey, USA. We have this um, notion or belief that uh, when you come to the US, everything is settled, you know, you, you've, you've made it. I came in and I searched for an asylum, and um, the way I was treated was scary. Uh, so it's, it's best known to me. It's, it's something I will never forget. One of the things that we learned was that because they never see the sun, there's like a window way up on the ceiling and there might be a sliver of light coming through, but all the time they're in the detention center, they never see the sun, it's all artificial light. If they win their case and are released, they release them at night because the sunlight would be too much for their eyes. My name is Batya Miller. My name is Jock Davenport, I'm her husband. When we first met Okenna, for me, I think it was all, almost love at first sight. My family are all back home. Uh, I, I, it's just me here in the US. So when I was, I was detained, they were visiting me and because I had nobody. I feel at home with them. I feel like I have a family too that is not my color, that is not my culture. You know, they embraced me. I think what keeps me going in this work is seeing the potential in people like Okana. We know that refugees put more into economies than they take in, in benefits. Okay, my name is Courtney Madsen. I am the office director at Church World Service, Jersey City. If it wasn't for Church World Services, I would have been pretty more difficult for me to adapt. I wouldn't have, um, have a good place to stay, you know. I might even be on the street, you know. So uh, it goes a long way. Once you meet a refugee and once you realize that these are just people who want a safe place to live, I don't see how you could say, I don't want that in my community. I don't want that person as my neighbor. Back home, they see male nurse. Uh, it's, it's rare to be a male nurse. Uh, I think it's a, it's a women, it's a female thing, you know? So when I came here, I found out that it's a lucrative job, it's a professional job. It's, a honor, it's an honorable thing to do, to be a nurse. But I be a man, a woman. So I loved it and I, you know, I intended to go into it.
every year that I have worked with refugees, there has always been more refugees. We're now at a historic high in the refugee crisis. This isn't a crisis that's going away. We really need to look at what our place is and how to be part of the solution. I guess it's this fear and hatred of the other that makes me so angry. Uh, we're in an epidemic of tribalism. Our first allegiance is to the human race. We have to react reactivate that thing. We are all created one, we're all human beings, so you, you don't look at us like uh, we are top class citizens. We are not, we're all equal. It's so important to maintain hope. You know, it's, it's so difficult, but it's so important. Yeah you know, to, to feel that, that something will change. To be an African is not a cause. To be an African doesn't mean I'm limited. To be a refugee doesn't mean it's over for me. What if we were peace? What if we were free? What if we... What if we were free?